Hi gamers, today it's time to ride around in a one horse open sleigh. Dog sleigh, that is. Let's check it out. Alright, so in this game, you are one of these little bobsleds here. You can be one of up to five players here, racing a color. And you just put them here on the starting positions, one through five. Uh, the game uh, is, uh, as you see, these are just separate track pieces that come apart. You can form any track you want. I'm just forming this one for training purposes. But the game actually gives you a ton of tiles with different scenarios. Here's ones with a bunch of trees, which I do have some trees out. As you see, little look, look like Christmas trees there. Uh, but you can play any kind. They're totally reversible, so they can have different uh, meanings for each of them. Here's one with a narrower one. Here's a little icy one that only has one straight goal in and out. But anyway, uh, and there's tons more that curve and whatnot. And if you don't have that much of an imagination, the game provides you with several different uh, options to put together on racetracks. I haven't raced all of them, but a few of them I have. The game also lets you pick which uh, dog sleigh you would like. And I think I'm gonna go with yellow, how's that, yeah. And let me just show you how this dog sled works here. As you see, we have two dogs uh, here and here, and then here is where your brakes will be. Now it starts off at three. And next what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab cards. As you see, there are these cards of each player's color. And I have already pulled aside my yellow deck. And so you're going to get your stack of cards that come in numbers one through five. You're gonna shuffle this deck and then you're gonna start off with five cards. And that's what every player will start off at with, is five cards. Now, the only exception to that rule is, if you look here on the board, it actually shows that if you're starting the four or five position, you get one plus card or two plus cards. Now, the reason for that is, you, you have to start on the outside edge, something you may not want because of course you'll have the hardest time making that turn. So what they do is they give you bonus cards that you can put in your hand at the beginning of your turn, and that's gonna probably give you the upper hand on the three inside, and basically even out the race. So let's say, since I'm yellow, I'm on track number four, that means I get plus one card. So instead of my five that I would usually choose, I'm going to get a six card. And so looking at the dog sled, I have two dogs right here, my left and my right, and then my brakes. Now how you would move around the board determines what the numbers are here and then subtracting your brakes. So for instance, three plus three is six minus the brakes, which is three. So if I just kept it as is, that means on this board that I would move ahead three spaces in a straight line. Let's say red did this, one, two, three. They didn't make any changes, they went straight ahead. All right, and let's just say the other ones did that too. That's if they're not changing anything on their board. But then I look at the cards in my hand, and I'm starting off with six because I'm on that fourth track there. Now I'm going to decide which cards I can play. Now I can play as many cards in my hand that are the same number at one time on this board. So for instance, if I wanted to play a four right there, that would be the only card I could play since I don't have any more fours. If I was to play a two, well, then I could play two twos, because they're both the same number. And you can place them on either side of the dog or on the brakes. Now, the game does give you extra tokens to switch your brakes up when you play a card there. But for me, that's just too much of a hassle, because having to pull these things out and put the other ones in just doesn't make sense. Um, I'd rather just place the card down there and just have that apply for the brakes. Now, what I would do is, let's see, in this example, let's look and see where I am here. Well. One, the first three players have just shot straight ahead. They're just racing for it. Well, I want to get a little bit better here, but let's see. I have a four. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my four right here. All right? Now, as you see, I put on that red flag. The reason they have a red and yellow flag is because it tells you if your sleigh is going to pull to the right or to the left. And on the track, to help you out, they have red and yellow flags all across the board to remind you where your left and right is, just in case you get that confused. So as you see right here, I have my uh, dog to my right pulling a four. So what I do is I add the numbers. Three plus four is seven. 
7 minus 3 is 4. So now I get to move four spaces, but one of those has to be to the right. Now, I get to decide when I want to move to the right. I can do it on the first move, second, third, or fourth. Well, I'm going to do it on the fourth because watch this. One, two, three. Now I've got to slide catty cornered to the four position. And look at me. I'm already on the inside. I'm already beating these bozos who didn't play any cards. So that would end my turn. What I would usually do is go back up to five cards in my hand. However, remember, I started with six and I only played one, so I don't need to draw up. Now, on my next turn, let's say, uh, this bozo moved, this bozo moved, who cares? I don't know. Anyway, let's just say it's my second turn. What do I want to do here? Well, maybe I want to go a little bit faster. So what I do is I play my one card on the brakes. So now, here I am. I'm going three plus four, which is seven, minus one. So I go six spaces now, and one of them is pulling to the right. So I go... One, two, three, four, five, and then I have to move six inside the loop there. Now, you're thinking, okay, Matt, I get what you're saying. Put the brake on as low as it can and speed through this course as fast as you can. No, I did something wrong there. If you notice on the board, there will be speed zones on here. Now, this one here, if I can get you to see it, it says three. That means if I'm moving faster than a three, which I did, I was moving six spaces there, I would receive a dent card. And these are the dent cards here. You don't want to get these. All right, if you receive a dent card on your sleigh, that means you hold one less card in your hand. So instead of drawing back up to five, I have to stay at four for the rest of the race. Another way you can get dent cards is let's say I was right here and I went one, you know, this is like five, four five, but I have to go one more and I can't go over to the right because I can only move once over to the right. So what will I do for my sixth move? Well, I'll have to bang into that snowbank there and I would receive another dent card, which means instead of holding four cards in my hand, I can now only hold three. So of course the game gets harder the more dents you have in your sleigh. The final way that you can get dents, uh, well you can get dents for running into uh, other players as well. But you can also get dents for running into some of these trees that I showed you earlier. So for instance, if I don't have the right combination to be able to weave through all these trees, if I just smack right through one, sure, I would remove that tree from the board and it's free and clear for all other players to cross over. So one of the advantage of not being first is having someone else maybe clear the way through trees. But for every tree I knocked over, I'm gonna get another dent card. So let's say I got another dent card for that. Well, now I only have two cards maximum in my hand, which of course is going to make it different when you're trying to decide which dogs do I move next. So if I wanted to move straight away, I could play a three there and a three there and only move three. Let's say I was over here in that case. You know, so you can always change it up. Now, of course, when you run out of the deck of cards, you want to shuffle them all back together and just replay them throughout the entire race until someone gets to the finish line. All right, so Snow Tails, final thoughts. What do I think about this game? Uh, I love racing games. I have a lot of car racing games, as you've seen in my previous reviews. Uh, racing games do not get old. But when I saw Snow Tails, I went, hmm, this is interesting. Dog racing, will that be fun? And it was. Uh, this game doesn't look like much. The tracks are super easy to set up. Dog sleds look normal. I like the little Christmas tree pines. Uh, this is basically the only winter theme game I have. And on these cold days, such as we, we're having now, I like to bring out this game. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's all, you know, luck of the cards, really on what you do. There is a lot of strategy. You would be surprised how much strategy there is. Like I said, if there's trees involved, I will do not want to be leading as they go through that forest because someone's going to make a mistake. And when you get dense, it is awful. You're going to get more and more. In fact, once you get down to two or three dents, I think you're done 
unless you're at the very last home stretch because there's no way that you can start controlling that dog sled by only playing two cards or maybe one because you're not going to have the cards you want. You have to play a card to get another card. It gets aggravating. But of course, that's what makes the game so much fun. So is it worth your time? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think you can still get this game. It's still in print, still new. It is super fun. It is very, very, very easy to teach. And I think it's something that the whole family can enjoy. All right, gamers. That's all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on!